But let's just have a little bit of a follow up on this practical. This is the one where we uh, varied the temperature and measured the pressure of a gas and we kept the volume constant. So this is the pressure law. Okay, so you've plotted the graph, uh, you've plotted the points in Desmos, you've drawn a straight line at best fit, and I ask you to extrapolate backwards and see where the where the line cut the x-axis, what, uh, what temperature did the line cut the x-axis? So let's have a look at this. Right, so here's the setup. Yeah, we've got a fixed volume of gas in some water. We heat the water up slowly and we measure the change in pressure each time. Okay, there's the apparatus. I, that's the one we have in school. I've done this in school some months ago uh, and I got the data and it looked like this. You plotted the data using Desmos, okay, and you should have got something like this, okay. So I've had a quick look through all your graphs. They, they look very good. Uh, a few of you um, need to maybe look at the way you put a straight line of best fit, okay, because the, the intercept, this is the one we're after here, okay, it should be, okay, it should be exactly minus 273 degrees Celsius. Now, that's a very significant temperature, which I'll come to in a minute, but just a little word about when we're drawing our line of best fit, okay, try and get the points spread out as much as possible, okay. Now, the key is to the, 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 the line, whether it's a curve or a straight line, has to go through the middle of the points as close to as many of the points as possible. So these distances between the points and the line have to be kept to a minimum. Okay, now I've kind of suspected that that might be an anomaly there. Okay, but that's the best straight line of best fit that I could come up with. And then that gives us this intercept here. I'll just zoom out so you can see the whole, the big, the whole picture. Okay, so this is the important temperature. Now, a few of you, a couple of you said, yeah, that's the, that's the temperature at which pressure is zero. Okay, that's correct, but I wanted you to um, do a bit of research. I wanted you to maybe look into this, uh, and it is significant. It's actually, this temperature is called absolute zero, and it's actually the coldest possible temperature that anything can have, any matter can have. It's the coldest possible temperature in the universe. It is impossible to go colder. Okay, so as we can see, the, the, my, my curve of best fit is my straight line of best fit. Not too bad. Okay, should be there. Anyway, like what does minus 273 mean? What's it all about? What is absolute temperature? Let's look at this. Okay, so <clears throat> here's the, the temperature here. Okay, so it's minus, it's actually minus 273. 0.15 degrees C. And like I said, it's, that's called absolute zero. The definition is that's the temperature at which all molecules and atoms have zero kinetic energy, i.e. They, they totally stopped vibrating or oscillating. They have literally zero kinetic energy. You can't have negative energy. You can't go colder than that because once the molecules and atoms have zero kinetic energy, they can't go any lower. Okay, so that's why it's the coldest possible temperature. All right. Now, why we've got zero pressure at this temperature should be quite obvious. Okay, at this temperature, imagine they had... Let's go back to the balloon. Do you remember the balloon at the start? Where's the balloon gone? There it is, right? The balloon. Now we've got we've got the mol all these molecules are whizzing around really quickly because they have kinetic energy. Yeah, all these molecules are whizzing around in a sample of gas really really quickly. If they have zero kinetic energy, if you cool that gas down to absolute zero. All these molecules will simply sit at the bottom of the balloon and not move. So they will exert zero pressure 
on the balloon. So that's why at zero, at absolute zero rather, at minus 273 degrees Celsius, pressure in a gas becomes zero because the molecules literally are not moving anymore. Okay. So this minus 273 temperature, it's called absolute zero. Now this is why scientists have invented another temperature scale. Okay, we're all used to Celsius, yeah? And now Celsius was invented, quite simply, the zero point was where the temperature at which water freezes, and the hundred point was the temperature at which water boils, and it was split into a hundred increments. It's as simple as that. The Celsius scale is a man-made scale. Like all units in physics, they are man-made, all right? Now, if this is the coldest possible temperature, minus 273, why not make this temperature our starting point? And that's what the Kelvin scale is all about. The Kelvin scale is exactly the same as the Celsius scale, except the starting point is zero. Okay, now an, an inc each increment, like each increment on the Celsius scale, one degree Celsius is exactly the same as one Kelvin. A rise of 100 degrees Celsius is exactly the same as the rise of 100 Kelvins. Okay, the only difference is the start point. So, if the start point is zero Kelvins, it's not degrees Kelvins, it's just Kelvins. Okay, so minus 273 is zero Kelvins. Then we have 100 Kelvins, which is minus 173 degrees C. Now, water freezing is plus 273. Now, there's the 15, 273.15 Kelvins. Okay. Water boiling, is it 373.15 Kelvins? So, there you have it. The Kelvin scale, much more useful mathematically to scientists. Because if we plot pressure against absolute temperature we get this graph where it goes through the origin. Does that make sense? Looks exactly the same graph that you plotted, except this y-axis is way over here at the start point. Now that's much better, much better, like I said, mathematically, because now we can say that pressure is directly proportional temperature. It's actually directly proportional to absolute temperature because we're using the absolute zero as our starting point. And there you have it. There's the pressure law. Pressure is directly proportional to temperature. Okay. As long as we use absolute temperature as our temperature scale, as long as we use Kelvin's. Okay, thank you very much. Any other questions on that, please let me know and I will try my best to answer them. Right, have a great day.